Hello everyone. Welcome to our dynamic arrays live class. I'm just going to wait a few minutes to see if there is any audio issues or anything like that. Um, It looks like we have uh, almost 400 people or tuned into the session now. So I'm super, super excited. Uh, and I couldn't really sleep very well last night. <laughs> it's almost 5 a.m. In, uh, in Wellington, New Zealand. And uh, I got up at 4 and I was just making sure everything is ready and, uh, and all of that. The only uh, thing that I'm kind of a little concerned about is I do not have two monitors in my workspace. So I'm using single monitor. So I hope everything goes and we don't get into this weird inception kind of thing. But um, yeah, welcome, welcome everyone for our live class on dynamic arrays. And uh, a very, very quick note before we jump into Excel, I have provided a sample data set in the video description. So please uh, click on that and go ahead and download it if you especially would like to follow along. Now, when I finish the session, I will have one more file, which I will save it up and upload again um, so that um, you can download that you will just have to bookmark the youtube page and maybe visit it after a few hours and then you will see that ex another link with the completed workbook with all the examples in there so uh, that is it uh, from the intro point i'm just going to put that uh, into the control room there so you can see that uh, the download uh, data set link is there in the video description um I can see that we have people from all over the world, um, you know, uh, from India, from Oregon, Portland, and then uh, Greece and Netherlands, and, um, and even someone, uh, someone's uni class. Uh, I think Dennis has asked their uni class students to join. So I am super honored and super thrilled to see all of you from all over the world. And uh, um, uh, Yes, let's let's go ahead. So um, I hope you have those of you who would like to especially follow along downloaded the file. Just another quick note, which is about Office 365. Now, dynamic arrays is a new functionality in Excel, but it is only available in Excel 365 or Office Online. So if you are using a an older version of Excel like Excel 2016 none of the functions that you see or the functionality you see is going to be usable, but uh, you will either migrate to Office 365 or you can always open Excel online and kind of practice these formulas uh, so that you are aware of them uh, for the date and time when you go into that. All right, we are now at 500 people. I just can't believe doing a live event with uh, such a large audience. Uh, on YouTube. So I am extremely thrilled and honored to present. Let us get into our uh, our session here now. Um, so that's the file that I'm referring to. And uh, uh, I, I can see that we are, um, uh, we are, um, you know, there's quite a bit of comments going on. What I will do is I will present for maybe 10, 15 minutes and then I'll come back to the comments area. I would like to personally say hello to all of you, but it is just not possible. Uh, and, you know, we will be here for the next hour just uh, waving hello. Instead, I want you to continue the banter in the comment section. Um, but, uh, you know, I want uh, all of you to just share something fun. So uh, maybe you know tell me what you're drinking as you could see i'm having a nice cup of coffee here uh, because this is the first thing that i do when i wake up on on the weekends in the weekdays i usually have breakfast and then have coffee but weekends is my uh, alone time with with a cup of coffee so that's what i'm having uh, before our session all right uh, so those of you who want to practice along downloaded the file let's uh, let's get in uh, you know tell me in the comment section what you're drinking uh, and um, and then uh, oh someone is having hot chocolate <laughs> uh, 
uh, enjoy uh, and uh, let's let's get in uh, into the session so as you as you can see here i have um, uh, a sample file with uh, dynamic arrays um, and um, this is uh, sample data. In fact, if you're wondering how I pulled this data, I've used uh, the geography data type in Excel, which is another feature. Uh, we are not going to cover that, unfortunately. <laughs> but I thought uh, you know, it's it's kind of interesting to use that to pull some uh, data instead of randomly making. I typed in the top 100 countries by population uh, into Google and then I downloaded that list from Wikipedia and then I've asked Excel uh, through the data types feature what are some of the geographical attributes of those countries like what is the area, what is the birth rate, GDP, population, agriculture, unemployment data etc. So we will be using this data. This data is um, super easy to understand and relate and I'm pretty sure most of you are from one of these countries because these are after all uh, the 100 most populous countries. Unfortunately, my current country, New Zealand, doesn't show up in this list because New Zealand is, uh, in terms of population, it's a very, very small country. Uh, but we'll make do with that. Uh, my home country, India, is is there. So, uh, you know, it's always bad. All right. So the first thing that you want to understand when it comes to dynamic arrays is, um, dynamic arrays is actually not just... Uh, a set of functions it is actually a set of features that are built into modern excel the excel 365 so um, when when you talk about dynamic arrays as a capability you're not referring to just a set of functions like filters and sort sort by unique it is actually a bit more than that so that's what we will do um, now those of you who have done uh, a little bit of Excel formula work will find all of what I'm doing fairly relatable and easy to follow along. But if you have not done anything uh, previously in Excel, you might actually find all of this uh, uh, slightly overwhelming. But nevertheless, continue watching and you will find uh, everything making sense as, as we go along. So uh, uh, we already know that Excel has... Uh, the data analysis power and the formula power. Now, one of the critical limitations of Excel formulas has always been uh, that a formula can only result in a single output value. That means uh, you have a formula like sum, uh, which is going to add up, let's say, five numbers. So we will just say one, two, three, four, five. Now, the answer that will be a single value and it will come back and sit in a cell. So this is uh, uh, a defining feature of the formulas. Uh, again, there is some exceptions to that rule, but that is how things were in the past. With the introduction of dynamic arrays, what Microsoft essentially did is it has added the capability for us to write and work with formulas and situations where the output may be more than one value. And if there is more than one value, what it will do is it will automatically, depending on the nature of the value, it will spill down. Like as if that formula is saying, oh, wait a sec, I got more values there. I'm just going to flow them downwards like this. Now, you might be thinking, when is a situation like this? So the let's start with the simplest example. Let's say I just want to see all the countries that are available to me in the data table. Now, the data is already here and I have named this table as data, but it doesn't have to be in a table. It could be a range of values as well. So let's say I want to see all the countries that are there in the data table. With the dynamic array capability, what we could do is we could say data and then open bracket country. Now, the country column has all my countries and you press enter in older version of Excel. This formula kind of doesn't work. I mean, it will contain all the values of country, but it will not show them all, all the values here. It will only show the very first country or it will give an error or something like that. Whereas with the dynamic array functionality, as soon as you press enter, it realizes that, oh, wait a sec, I got 100 countries. I'm going to spill down and show you all the 100 countries here. Now at this point, I just want to take a quick look at the chat window to make sure that there are no technical difficulties. So let me... Um, Go into my stream yard. Um, 
All right. Uh, so we are still going on with the <laughs> what you're drinking, but everyone seems to be having a nice cup of whatever you are enjoying. So and the that is the cornerstone of the dynamic array functionality wherein you have a a formula or a function or an operation in a cell that can result in more than one value and those values depending on the nature of the values they will automatically spill now the spill can be either way so it can spill down it can also spill sideways so for example what uh, what we could do is um, if i want to get that particular row values for algeria resulted here i could go to the cell here and then i can say equal to and then pick all the values that i want so you can see that i have selected data b5 to l5 and you press enter and they will automatically spill and go sideways right so this is how the dynamic array functionality is it will uh, it adds this new superpower to excel where um, depending on what you are doing if the formula or the operation has multiple values they will automatically result and then excel will spill them down or sideways or even the full box so that's the spill functionality and you must understand this this spill functionality as the corner for all of the things that will happen from here onwards so apart from the spill functionality what microsoft did is they have also introduced um, a six sim six functions as a start and a special operator okay the special operator is hash operator or the pound operator or the sharp operator depending on how you want to call it i just call it the hash operator and we will get into the hash operator in a minute but for now let us understand those six formulas these six functions or formulas will help us um work with the dynamic arrays and understand the and introduce new capabilities into excel so let's just say i got my country's data here this could be countries this could be your employee data product data or anything for that matter your school data whatever you imagine now you're looking at this and you want to for example see which countries ha are um you know having more than 50 percent agricultural land now to answer such a question you would have to first come here and apply a number filter and then say greater than and then just type 50 percent uh, to see that you know about 35 countries out of 99 have um, one uh, more than 50 percent of their land area dedicated to agriculture while this works it has one terrible limitation which is this is all manual right you will have to set this up and then see the results what if for some purpose of data analysis you want to automate all of this that means i want to put my input criteria the 50 percent in a cell and then based on that criteria i want to see which countries have uh, more than 50 percent so that cell uh, let's just fill up some color in there and then what we want is we want to see which countries now have more than 50 percent of land area for agriculture so this is where the very first function filter comes handy this new function filter function introduced in office 365 what this does is it will take a couple of parameters and then it will give you the output based by filtering the data set so what do we want to filter we want to filter our data and the criteria is data agriculture land should be greater than 50 because that's that's the criteria we said right so we'll say simply greater than b2 and you press enter at this point it will do the same operation as our manual filter did it will give us all the data so you can see those 39 countries uh, um, show up here i believe it is um coming all there now one while this all works beautifully and you know it kind of the filter function is self-explanatory there are some additional issues with this though 
for one, what it does is it will give the data, but it will not format the data as per your original data value. So this, these are not formatted in currencies or percentages or anything like that. They'll just come through as the numbers. And here, Excel will generally apply the general formatting, which means depending on what the value is, Excel will use the number or scientific notation or whatever it wants. So uh, when you are getting the data through this kind of dynamic array notation, you must add that formatting information afterwards. But this is something that you normally do with the regular formulas anyway, right? When you write a sum formula on a currency column, the output will be just a big number and you then apply currency formatting on top. So the same thing needs to happen here. But uh, here, uh, the thing to keep in mind is you would need to format that entire spill area, not just the top cell, only then the formatting will, will appear, apply correctly. That is one of the current limitations, but because Excel 365 is like, you know, every month Microsoft adds some new features to it and usually every six months they roll it out. So in future, uh, very, very soon, we might be able to specify how we want our formatting to be done and that might actually trickle down and work as well. But for now, that's that. The second limitation of this approach is if I filter here, I see, um, let's go to greater than, 50% have filtered the 35 countries and um, and we can see the header information on the top. I can see that what column is what. Unfortunately here, I lose that header criteria, header information. We are only filtering the data part, not the header part. So that is another uh, thing that you lose with the filter function. I don't want to pitch the filter function as a kind of slightly less powerful alternative than manual filter. It is actually a very, very powerful function, but uh, you, I want you to aware of some of the additional things that you need to keep in mind when you are trying to replace the filter operation with the filter function, but this will give you that formula-based approach to deal with your data and situation in a more dynamic nature. Okay, so let's address uh, uh, some of the one of those concerns, which is about uh, having the header information. Now I have filled my formula down and I want to, I suddenly realize that, oh, maybe if I put the headers on the top, this makes more sense. So what you could do is you can uh, go to the cell above. This is where you want to add the header and you can introduce the header. Let's just say I want to insert a row above and here I want to see my headers. All I have to do is I can say data and then hash headers. Now, table, any table will have their headers information in this um, square brackets field hash headers and that will give you the headers and you can see that the headers are now all spilled down and they can be on the top and your data is at the bottom. So that is done. Same for the formatting of the percentages, you would simply select and format. Now, I have done the agricultural land column as my formatting for percentages. But if I change the criteria, for example, let's go a bit more generous and see which countries have 25% agricultural land. What this does is it will apply the formula again. It will give you more countries. So now there's 80 countries almost. But you can see that the formatting of the percentage kind of stops here because that's how far we have done the formatting. Beyond that, we have not specified how the formatting should be. So again, these will be going back to the general formatting. So those are some of the things that you need to keep in the back of your mind when you're working with these formulas. But this is uh, a minor annoyance compared to the giant uh, awesome functionality that these additional functions provide. All right, so that's the filter function. Now that we got a filter function, let's just get into a little uh, narrow criteria here. So we have less number of data and then we can understand this a little more. So 70%, these are my countries that have 70% agricultural land. And now looking at this, the formula is actually in the top left cell. So that is my formula cell. Here is my formula. But all of these cells also have values. If I select any cell in the spill range, this is what it is called a spill range because it is having a formula here that is generating data that has uh, this many columns and that many rows. So it is a spill range. And in that spill range, the formula is only attached to the top left cell. 
everything else is having the value but they are not really having the formula so if i select any other cell you see that the formula is grayed out in the formula bar whereas on that cell it is dark color indicating that you can edit so um, while you are here if you try to edit the formula you are not able to really do anything to edit or make changes or to move it or whatever you must go to the top left cell so that's number one the second thing is anytime you select a cell in the spill range so if you click on any cell excel will show this little blue colored border uh, with a little bit of shadow around it to indicate that this cell is part of this spill range okay so this is uh, these are the visual cues for you to understand a regular data set from a spill range you know if i go back here and i select i don't see my blue color border i don't see uh, anything there so this is a regular array uh, or regular table whereas this is a spill range all right now let's uh, understand the function of the filtering a little more by customizing that i'll leave that example there i'll come back here and then this time i don't want to see the whole list of all the columns for my countries that have 70 percent agricultural land instead i just want to see the names of such countries which which have more than x percentage of agricultural land so this is where you can use the filter function in the original example we simply said data now you can say data of the country that means i just want to filter the country by agriculture land right and you're now only seeing the country names all right so this is uh, how you can limit the amount of data that is filtered and returned as an output whereas here you're seeing all the columns here you're only seeing the country thing all right so this is uh, how that filter function can be customized there's so much more you could do there but that's the start let me switch over to the comments area to see if there's any questions um wow 769 people watching this this is amazing really thank you so much for tuning in um let's um why do you like filter function from this data or query oh rajan asks what do you like do you like filter function or the query function in the google sheets i am in love with the filter function uh, i have not used google sheets as much so i will simply say filter function for me um, and uh, carla asks can user copy the data from that filter and paste it in another workbook yes they can uh, you will just have to select the entire range and copy it and paste it as, as a value or whatever in, in another file um, so dennis asks a uh, a very interesting question what if the target spill area of the filter function already has something now this is uh, really getting interesting right so you are spilling you are doing all the fun stuff but then uh, you notice that there's something else down under there so let's just demonstrate that very quickly so we are uh, having some data we assumed that this is how far our spill will go and we put something here like um a, we'll just put whatever there okay notice i'm just right now what this means is if i have a formula that results more values then it will not be able to go down so let's see that we can change this to 50 percent which will have more countries now see what happens here you'll get this new brand new error spill error right this is one of the things that they have added as part of the whole dynamic array functionality uh, a spill error happens when you <laughs> this is like um, a spill error will happen when your pet has bladder issues and she she goes for wee on a carpet but here a spill error will happen if you if you have a formula that is trying to spill down or sideways or both ways and then it notices that there's something else that is stopping it you can see some helpful indications of where the problem could be if you see this uh, it is trying to spill so the spill error will indicate this dotted lines that this is where i want to go and i notice that you got something there 
And the only way to fix the spill error, you delete your thing and then it will go and address that. Until that point, you will have the spill error there. Um, just as you have if error, unfortunately, there is no ease spill or if spill kind of an error. But uh, you know, you can kind of see that visually and then you can uh, understand what to do and then fix the problem. So this is also why when you are working with these dynamic array functions, you have to be extremely careful of your surroundings in the spreadsheets. You don't want to place them close to each other because that can create a lot of problems. Let's see what other questions you have. Um, so Brian asks, how would you set up your formula to show just two or three columns of output rather than country column? This is another awesome question, right? You are seeing the filter function and then your, your, fi your mind is firing all these extra things like, oh, this is good. But what if I want to see the country and their population or, or something else? So how do we do this? So we, we'll start with the um, just country as an example. Now let's see what additional things we could see. For example, I want to see my country and, um, and the area because agricultural land is something that goes with area. So we want to see country and area. Here, the filter function becomes filter data now where earlier we said data now we want country and area so we will say country so you want to open two square brackets and then country area so this is how you select multiple columns in a table this is not something new in excel 365 you could do that kind of an operation of selecting multiple columns even in older versions and then uh, the criteria will be agriculture land i'm just gonna hard code the value here uh, just so we we kind of uh, don't have to scroll to the left to understand what's happening and this is how you can see two columns both country name and the land area now this is all good right you you can kind of make sense of what's happening here um, what this is doing is it is filtering um, country and area and then giving you those two columns worth of data so this is good uh, let's uh, add a little more twist to this but before i add i want to just switch back to the comments to make sure uh, if there is more questions interesting that we will address that um, so this is actually another interesting one there's quite a few questions and um, um, if i'm not answering all of them i will definitely come back so my plan is to um, run this for 60 minutes talking and then 30 more minutes and then for questions so feel free to hang around and uh, in in um, i will definitely help you if i if you don't hear me answering your question immediately uh, either post it again or uh, you know wait until end and we can we can do this so muhammad asks can we use other formulas like sum average if we look up with this function of course yes this is the beauty of the whole dynamic array functionality so now um uh the we are seeing country and area let's add one more fun function this is population what this does is it's just like this here but uh, instead of showing countries i want to see the populations of uh, where the agriculture area is more than 50 percent so we'll say filter um oops filter data population data agriculture land is greater than 50 percent so this will give me all the populations now i can i can show it like this i can directly send that filter data to a sum formula for example i can see what is the total population of the world where where in the countries where there is at least 50 percent agricultural land and i'll get one number so this is how you can take your filter function or any of these other functions that I will be introducing shortly to your existing Excel function. So this opens up massive can of possibilities for us, right? We, many people might, when they hear about dynamic arrays, they think that, oh, these are six new functions I need to learn. Now you're learning 
a whole new way of looking at data and a whole new way of mashing things up. So this is actually quite good. Of course, this is not super exciting because we could do this kind of an operation with the sum ifs function that is already there, right? We, we don't have to do filter and then sum. We could have directly written this as a sum ifs function. Now, those of you who are uh, kind of tuned into my channel for a while, you already know this, but I'll just show you uh, sum ifs data population because that's what we want to sum up um here data agriculture land oops not the official only agriculture land and then greater than 0 0.5 you get that number same as the one above right so there's nothing new or mysterious with this functionality but you you're seeing how this can kind of work so that's my some function what if i don't want to write some function i want to see the numbers but then i want to still be able to sum them up and show that value here i want to sum of all of these cells so here you can write the sum function and then you can select the values as if you're selecting them right notice what happens to my reference here it says v5 to v29 but the moment I drag this down to the very last cell, notice what is going to happen. It will simply say V5 to V38, just the last cell. But the one before, it simply says, oh, you want the entire spill range, just say V5 hash. Right? That's what the spill function, uh, spill range operator is, the hash operator. What hash operator does is, because when you are writing a spill formula, you don't know exactly where it will end up. You don't know the end point, but you always know the starting point. So you point to the starting cell and then you simply put the hash there. Depending on how big your range is, that, that much range will be automatically captured by Excel and then it will be used inside the sum formula to get the result. Now, this formula is not stopping at 39. It is just going from here and then all the spill range is accessed to sum up. So if I change my function here and then I say uh, I'm looking at 30%, it will automatically tell me what that population value is. So that's the most important operator, the hash operator. All right. Uh, So Cherian asks, I believe these functions are automatically refreshed and they're not like pivot tables where you have to manually refresh. Yes, you're right. You just refresh. Uh, you don't need to press refresh. You write them and you change the data and automatically everything kicks. These are simply like formulas. All right. So uh, we will uh, continue our discussion and see more things. And then I'll come back to your questions uh, in maybe another 10, 15 minutes, but uh, keep the conversation going. So. I got my country area, I got my population. I'll show one more trick before we move to the next function, which is, um, this is showing just country, that is showing country and area. But what if I want to see the country and their population, right? So these are the columns that are not together. They're, they are, there's some other data in between and I want to see those two. Now, this is where there are multiple ways of doing this i will show you one simple way uh, but uh, in the comment section i already saw that someone actually showed another way of doing this um, so what we want to see is country and population these fields are not adjacent to each other so we couldn't really use uh, that uh, colon operator and combine the columns right so this is where you would first filter your entire data and then you'll say data agriculture. We seem to be using agriculture land, but you could be doing this with any any set of things. It doesn't really matter. Um, and uh, you will get all the columns, right? So you will write as if you want all the columns. Now you realize that you don't want all the columns. We want this column and I believe that column or maybe that one, I don't know. Uh, yep, the one after GDP. So it's you want this column and that column. So this column is number one, two, three, four, five. So you want the first column and the fifth column, right? Again, uh, you can hard code them, you can automate them to the next level, but you want the column number one and five of this resulting filter. So what you could then do is you can then say, um, there are a couple of different ways of doing. 
I normally go with the index function. What index function can do is it can take some data and then it can uh, uh, it can then return or change the order of things for you and then give you that. So this is an index function. So you pass the filter data to the index function. Now this is something that you might find a bit hard, especially if you have never used either filter or the index function in your life. So bear with me but you know if you're not understanding that's fine you can ignore this part and come back to it later once you feel more confident or uh, download the example file at the end of the session from the updated video description and then get it from there so index of my original data we'll come back to the row number for uh, later but the column number aspect if i say i want column numbers one and five those are the columns that I want. Supposedly, this should give you that entire data. It doesn't really work. It will only give me the data for Afghanistan. Right? Notice what is happening. Uh, your filter data, and then you want column one and five. So you got the data for Afghanistan, but you do want still the other data, right? So this is where the row number aspect needs to have all the row numbers as well, right? So this is, uh, it, it may not seem like, it might seem like a complicated thing. So if, for example, if I say one, two, three, I'll get the first. Uh, something funny is going on there, but. Uh, oh, no. It does give you Afghanistan, but it doesn't give you the other ones. What you want to do is you want to provide all the row numbers. I think um, I may have done something funny there. So what you want to give a set of numbers from one to how many other countries are there to show all the rows. So to do that, you need to know how many values are there. I'll just uh, be doing greater than 50%. So this is probably the one. Let's see, 35 countries, right? So if I can give 35 numbers, this will actually take us to another uh, a function as well. So for example, if I have one, two here, and then I'm just gonna drag it down to 35. And then where this is there, if I point to my values, I will get all the 35 countries and their populations. Okay, I'll just show you this formula again. I'll make this nice and white so we can actually see everything together. So we're saying filter my data where the row numbers are here, which is one to 35, and then the column numbers are one and five. Right? While this works, it's kind of like a an annoying way of doing this. But if I then say, because I just want one to 35, I don't need to type them in the cells. I can use this new function that they have added as part of the dynamic array feature, which is the called sequence. What sequence does is it will generate a list of numbers based on um, your starting point and a step that you specify. But if you don't say anything, you simply say sequence 35, you will automatically get 35 numbers from one to 35. So this is how you can use. There is another way of doing this, which is to use two sets of filters. If you scroll up in the comment section, you will find that someone has talked about that. Uh, we will come back to a little more discussion on sequence at a later point but for now that is the filter function okay the one thing that i didn't show of course i didn't show many things but the thing that i didn't show is so far we are only dealing with one condition which is agricultural land greater than 50 percent what if you want to establish a set of conditions that is another thing that we will touch at a later point during the session or you know i encourage you to maybe uh, download and see how you can manipulate that to add extra conditions. So this is my filter function. Uh, I'll just say the examples and then I'll scroll to the right. That will be easier. So first function is filter function. In fact, there are six functions. So the they are filter, unique, sort, sort by, sequence, and then RAND array. While there are six functions, filter is one of the 
kind of more important ones because it has an operation going on in filtering the data whereas the other ones are more of support operations so we will uh, probably be able to spend less time on these other ones but together with these six and your already existing 400 odd excel functions will create so many more combinations for you so i want you to think in that direction like how do i take these and mix with my whatever i'm already doing to make my life better and to do things that are previously not possible or would, would take a lot more steps manually or through formulas so let's uh, take a quick look at the unique function what unique function does is it will give you a list of unique values out of the data. So it's kind of like uh, that uh, big remove duplicates button here. You, you see that button? That's the remove duplicates button. Um, but uh, it is through a formula based approach. Now, unfortunately, in our data here, there's nothing duplicate. So it gets a little bit tricky to implement the um, you know unique function on this data so i'm just gonna make up something here uh, and then demonstrate that so we will have some values here so i'm just going to uh, type some names as you could see none of these names are duplicated so if i write for example unique of this data i'll get all of that data as it is so there's no duplicates in this but for example if i put ali twice you can see that in the output data ali is listed only once so this is what at a uh, at a high level unique function does it will take the data and then it will remove any duplicates from it and then it will give you the output data like this. So that's the unique function. Uh, if you are typing the unique function, you can see that there is actually some additional parameters here by column and exactly once. Um, now I want to see all the names that are listed only once so that means i want to see bill james john cynthia and sita but not ali because ali has been duplicated so it's kind of like another variation on the unique so this is where you can use the last parameter which is unique of your data and then um let's say true at the last parameter i won't get ali's name because that person has been duplicated so if he appeared twice so we are not going to get that person so this is uh, that second parameter third parameter that you could use and the by call option is used if your data is not in a row but it's going sideways and you want to extract the uh, uniques from that so these uh, this is my unique function now you may not be super impressed by these but these open up several different amazing possibilities for me as a data analyst or a person who is visualizing or building dashboards and all of that so i can see all of this is very useful i'll show you one really amazing example of how this unique can work with so if, if i look at my data here I, as you could see none of these columns have any duplicate values they're all like especially maybe the official language has one but um, because they're all comma separated it kind of gets a bit messy but let's say I want to see uh, how many uh, countries, um, how many alphabets are represented in the first letter of the country. So you have countries with A, B, C, D like that. But you know, there may not be a country that begins with Y or W or something like that. I just want to see which alphabets are represented as first country. So unique alphabets. This is how you can do it. We don't have the alphabet the first letter available as a column in our data so how are we going to do this well here comes the quick trick so you simply say unique and then you take your original data which is data country now instead of saying data country you then pass it to your extracting the first letter function which is my left function left of any value one will give you the very first letter so that's the left function and then leave it you'll get all the first letters and then they will be uh, arranged here for you. You can see that this count is only 21 in the status bar. So we have five letters not represented. 
right? So this is that. And now if I want to see for each letter, how many countries are there, you know, how, which function we could use? We could use the good old countifs function, countifs data country. So I want to see which countries begin with A. So we can take the criteria as this ampersand star, which will tell me all the countries that are beginning with A. Now, if I do it like this, I am forced to fill down this formula to see what's happening to B, C, D, E like that. But I don't know how far I need to drag this down. This is where the beautiful hash operator comes into handy. I don't have to say A N5. I can simply say A N hash, A N5 hash. And what this will do is it will create criteria and automatically fill down the formula as well. So you can see how many countries are there. You can then put some nice little data bar on top and you can see the distribution of alphabetical alphabets in the first letter and at least the most hundred populous countries in the world they seem to all be, most of them 12 percent of them are beginning with the letter s so that's uh, an interesting way of taking the unique now you may not find immediate practical application of doing something like this but see the power of this right you can take this and now if you're working with let us say all the uh, invoices that are coming into you and you're doing some analysis and you want to understand by weekday what is the distribution of invoices that you're receiving you you don't have to add the weekday column to your data you can leave the date column in the invoice table as it is and here you can uh, use the weekday function and then extract the unique values and the counts and everything and then that will give you uh, something like this so you can you don't have to be limited by what is in your data you can go and add some something extra on top like this so this is uh, the unique example let me quickly check uh, your uh, your comments as well um So this is, uh, Isaac asks, uh, the, the example where we removed Ali because he has appeared twice, but what if in each occasion he has got a different value and we want to remove only if the values are different, otherwise keep them. So that means the unique combinations. So I'll show you that as well. You, um, I'll put a few more items that are duplicated uh, and uh, we'll say that is name. And then this is a uh, department. Let's be easy and I'll put everyone in the marketing department. Now, the second Ali is in the HR department. Whereas this third Ali also in the marketing department. You see what's happening here. Um, so Ali marketing has been repeated, but Ali HR is only once and Cynthia marketing has been repeated as well. So here you can use unique and you simply select the whole thing. And this will work just as you expected, which is it will list one value per combination. So if Ali marketing has been repeated only once, it will be present. Uh, Ali HR, uh, Cynthia marketing is only once. Uh, the second one is gone. And that is also one. But the moment you change any of your data, for example, if I move Cynthia, the second one into HR, I will add another row. So this is how the unique function uh, can be used to add multiple columns and it will automatically remove those combinations for you. So that's, uh, that is a unique combination. Now let's go and quickly understand the sort and sort by function. They're kind of related to each other. What sort function does is it will sort your data in, in alphabetical or numerical order, depending on ascending or descending fashion that you want. Ah, oh, my coffee has gone really cold now. So it reminds me of a joke that I heard once in an Indian movie. Uh, a bunch of folks go into a restaurant it's like a very fancy restaurant <laughs> and then they ask uh, the waiter uh, for coffee now 
most all these folks have never been to like a this kind of a fine restaurant so the waiter asks back what coffee do you want hot coffee or cold coffee and they get surprised because they they didn't realize that there's two options available so they ask you know how much are these and then the hot coffee is like 50 50 rupees which is the currency in india but the cold coffee is 100 rupees so then they decide you know just get hot coffee and then they get the hot coffee and then they were all drinking uh, they, they they all sit and they they're not immediately drinking you know they keep chatting and talking about this and that and then one guy immediately says hey drink it up before it becomes cold and then he will charge for cold coffee uh well i don't have to pay for either of them because i made the coffee myself but uh, uh, so moving on to the sort example what sort does is as i said it will sort your data so for example if i want to see all the countries in my data set original data set if you notice at least in the current file that i have on my computer i have sorted them in the alphabetical order so there is little arrow here on the top of country you can see that um that's indicating a to z order but if i want to sort them by um you know population or something i could just say sort sort my data and then sort index is the column number that you specify so you can say which column you want to sort that by population is the fifth column so i say data and then five and then i can also specify the sort order if you don't say anything it will be ascending order i'll say descending order we now expect to see all the countries data set listed as it is um but sorted by the alphabetical uh, sorry most population populous country so china india etc so this is how the sort function works it will take your original data it will switch the order and then it will show all the countries right so this is my sort function what if i don't want to see all these columns i just want to see the names of countries right but i want to sort by that column the fifth column whereas i want to see that alone so how do we do that this is where the very handy sort by function comes because what sort does is it will take the data it will sort by a column in the data but it will keep all of the data as it is whereas what sort by does is it can take the data and it can sort it by another column but this data can be different from that again it might be very confusing to understand just with words so let's do a demo sort by data this is what we want we want our country but it we want it to be sorted by population in descending order so now i'm only seeing the country names because the first parameter is country so that is my sort by function right uh, the while i'm not doing a, a lot of examples on both sort sort by or even unique for that matter we will come back and we will see how these all can be combined i'm also a little bit mindful of the time so I, we will make a move now and let me quickly demonstrate the sequence function what sequence does as as i have shown you earlier is it will generate a list of numbers so i'll make a sequence of 10 numbers sequence 10 which will give you that it also say sequence comma 10 which will give you 10 numbers but along the columns again purely from uh, a business data analysis point of view you may not find much application for either this or that but these are powerful functions which will help you in a lot of formula or workbook automation so for example i want to generate all the dates in the current uh, uh, calendar year all the dates or all the starting date of the month or whatever so for example let's just generate all the dates in the starting date of each month in the 2021 so we can put 2021 as the input year in my cell and then i can simply say date this is how you can generate date in excel by the way you select that that's the starting point uh, that's the year and where it says month i simply say sequence 12 because every year has 12 months and then the day i want is 1 because the first day of the month and i'll get all the dates i'll get them but they will be turned into general formatting so you'll see the number representation of that but you can turn that into short date or long date format and you can see your entire calendar starting months generated you could kind of tweak this to generate financial year data or whatever 
again at this point some of you might be thinking hmm when would i use that well if you're doing a any kind of financial analysis or building depreciation schedules or uh, asset valuations or any kind of those things you often find this kind of rolling months in in such models and you can use this date function with the sequence inside that to generate the dates that you want and automatically get everything automated for that with the hash operator so the date is here if i want to refer to the date i can just say for example i want to see what day of week that is i can simply say weekday mm, hash and then i'll get the day of week as a number i believe one is monday and seven is sunday or something like that and then you will get the values there so this is a uh, how you you would be able to use that sequence function now let's use the sequence function for something more interesting eh? so we got our countries here i just want to see the top 10 countries by population i don't want to see all the countries so what we will do is we will say sort by data country population sending order we, will, we are now seeing all the countries same as the formula that is here but instead of all the countries i want to see only the 10 ones so here you could then say there's again multiple ways of doing this just with any other excel formula you know excel has different formulas so obviously uh, for each and everything there's multiple ways of doing it so uh, one way you could do this is you can take the sort by and then you can pass that to your good friend index uh, which will take the data and then if you say i want the rows 1 to 10 out of this uh, then it will give you because it's already sorted you just want the first 10 rows of that information so this is where the sequence comes in you get your top 10 countries by population but this is all dynamic so if i change my um where it says 10 if i point it to that bx9 and then i can change this to 12 countries i can change this to five countries i can see, change this to seven countries i will see that how do you while all of this is good you might be thinking oh how do i move this formula if i want if i don't want this in this cell i want it to be here or something you just uh, select that and move it only the top cell it will automatically move that formula and hence the spill range wherever you want. You can also cut control X and paste control V. You don't have to do all of that. You just want to only do the top one unless you have applied some formatting further down, in which case you must select all of that. Right. So let's say this is my country and then um, that's their GDP. Right. For example, I want to see the GDP of such countries as well, top seven countries. Um, so once you have your country name there, you could get the GDP in any number of ways. For example, you could use your uh, good friend XLOOKUP and then you can say lookup China in the data table country column and then return data GDP. Return. Obviously, this is only going to return that, but if you want to spill it down automatically, you just use the spill operator there and you will get the GDP values for all of these. You can apply your uh, currency formatting and you will see the GDPs of the seven most populous countries. You could do this for 10. The GDPs will come down, but the formatting won't go. So you may want to kind of select all of these range and, and set it up like that so that then you can change this so you can say eight you can say five and it will work what if i want to parameterize that one as well i'll put a different color there so i want to say the top or bottom here i can go to my um, data validation and then where it says any i can simply say this is equal to top comma bottom so we now have both choices in the cell and i can pick what i want so here what we would do is where we are saying minus one directly we will simply use if formula and then say if uh, oh, something seems to be gone. if this is equal to top then i want minus one else i want one this is how i can parameterize my sort direction as well 
through a simple if formula and i'm seeing top five countries by gdp i can see bottom five countries by gdp i can um, switch this and it will all work so it may not look exactly correct especially the bottom one it looks a bit uh, funny if you ask me but i think what's going on there is um, they are coming up but then they are shown in the alphabetical order or something like that uh, but you know it's all working fine uh, it's just uh, the oh we are seeing top bottom five countries by population and their gdp that that explains <laughs> uh, we are not seeing the population we are seeing their corresponding gdp so that all works all right so that is how those five functions work now there is this additional one thrown in i think um, the rand array function has got to be one of the most uh, uh, seemingly uh, trivial function in the pack of these six right I, when you are explaining all of this and you come to rand array you, most people will be like ah oh, i wonder when that when that will be helpful but it is actually a very powerful tool for both generating random numbers as well as doing simulations or generating random samples of data and whatnot the rand array function uh, the way it works is it will generate a bunch of random numbers for you so you can say rand array 10 and you get 10 random numbers the default would be from 0 to 1 but you can also use rand array and then say 10 numbers that are from 1 to 100 as integer you will get that you want to for some purpose generate a set of non-repeating random numbers you could also do that for example i'll say rand array 10 numbers 1 to 10 true i'll get 10 numbers but as you could see at least with this sample of random numbers that i generated number three is repeated uh, and um, you know so one way to deal with that is you can then take this and then send it to unique which will automatically remove any duplicates and you'll get that of course you're not getting 10 numbers you'll get x something less than that so uh, that's how for example you can change this to 100 and then you can make more random numbers than you need maybe twice or thrice more and then chances are you will not have that but with random fraction you know the possibilities kind of get limitless so you always kind of with application of unique you will remove any duplicates from that so that is a rand array function you can use the rand array function to generate a sample of data as well so for example i just want to see a random sample of five countries show me any five countries and the way this would work is um we'll take um So we want our country and then let's say index data country and then we want to get any five countries out of that so we will use sequence I'm sorry um, and array and then we, we want to make five random values with the minimum will be one because this first country and the maximum is how many our countries that are there so we'll say count a of data country that will give you how many countries are there and then this needs to be here so essentially what we are getting is we are getting five random numbers between one to maximum number of countries and uh, that will be passed to that and you'll get five countries there might be repetitions in here depending on how your random number generates but if you go to formula and calculate now or you press the f9 key you will keep seeing a random sample of five countries so this is uh, how that rand array can be used to generate a sample of data so that is uh, in a nutshell how these newly introduced dynamic array functions work um, some of these functions can get into an error situation in which case uh, Quite a few of them have uh, a built-in safety check so for example the filter function 
has any fair if empty option so if you are filtering and there's nothing available it will you can use this so for example if i say agriculture land greater than right so if i say i want agriculture land greater than 150 percent which is not possible you'll get the calc error because the filter is trying to calculate something but it's not there and with if empty uh, no countries found if i put that i'll get that as an error message and the moment you fix this uh, or you change the input criteria it will show value so you could use that where such an option is not available you could use your good old if error around them and it will automatically suppress the error message so um, that is it uh, from the content point of view i want to now switch to the questions and then see uh, what kind of questions you have and help you out there um, All right. Uh, so Syed asks, can I download the Excel file once the session is completed? Of course, yes, that's the whole point of this. Uh, please um, bookmark the YouTube page. And if you have not subscribed, uh, maybe you want to subscribe. Again, no compulsion. Uh, but uh, that'll, that way you have the, the link in your browser. I'm not going to list this video in my YouTube uh, video content so it will be unlisted which means uh, the only way to get there is either bookmarking it or referring to my earlier email and from there you will go to the video and the video description will have updated link it's not going to be there immediately but sometime later during the day i will put it up there uh, So Nikhil asks, instead of a standard table or a range, can you refer to a pivot table in these formulas? Very, very good question, Nikhil. Of course, you can refer to a pivot table. Your formulas will get a bit more clunkier and roundabout. This is mainly because the, unlike table, which has a structural reference built into it, so I can say data, country, a pivot table doesn't have such a notation so a pivot table data points are usually um, referred by the coordinates of the pivot so you will say uh, pivot a1 to a7 or something like that but pivot tables themselves can grow or shrink automatically you have to first build all the necessary um, back-end mechanism to make this happen so you can still do that i suggest uh, searching on the internet or on my website for dynamic named ranges as a starting point you could also hypothetically i've not been able to successfully do it because they they tend to be very clunky use the cube formulas which can uh, kind of return a pivot table and then pass that cube formula into my uh, dynamic array functions but if you have gone all the way to cube formulas you may be able to simply use them alone to get what you want instead of doing this kind of work Uh, Priyanka wants to see the column on AO. Um, let's see that. Um, so this is my uh, the country numbers and then by alphabets. And uh, we are using the unique formula on the left of one to generate all the alphabets. And then here I'm using data of country countifs and, and then take the first letter as an5 hash ampersand asterisk to see how many countries begin with the letter a so the ampersand asterisk part is something that you could do in other versions of excel as well even counters for that matter only thing new here is that hash operator which is used to uh, point to this entire range so you don't have to drag this formula down it'll automatically spill down all right uh, let's uh, Tim asks, did you format the date you are seeing as serial number? Yes, of course, I had to do that. Uh, this is, as I said, very early on in the session, the dynamic array functions are, um, they, they only get you the data. They don't apply any formatting conditions. So you would have to apply the formatting um, beforehand or after the formula is done, you select and apply the formatting. Um, so those of you who are not able to read uh, some of these functions, I recommend that you uh, 
wait until the sample file is provided or um, I can understand that some of you might be watching on a smaller screen um, but if I zoom too much I can't even show anything but that's the function there uh, for Priyanka I think she's asking and Carol says excellent thank you thank you so much Anne for tuning in I I was quite nervous as well because I haven't done uh, this way of YouTube live streaming I've done some zoom sessions so I was quite skeptical like how this will all go uh, and, um, and but I'm really glad uh, that it went very well uh, and uh, I actually printed a run sheet this is the first time I've done a, in a while because uh, during my early training sessions and webinars and podcasts I would have a sheet like that but over time you kind of get uh, used to the process that you don't need to overly prepare you just go and do it but uh, yesterday night I printed something just to make sure that I'm not missing out anything uh, so that's uh, that's good uh, thank you so much um, Anup Uh, Diana and Coiner says, uh, can you show how those blue bars are there? This is actually um, another good question. What you have is once you got the numbers in a range of values, you simply select that. You go to home, conditional formatting, data bars, and select the bar that you want. You can apply with the custom color as well, but that's what I did. I simply selected this. This is conditional formatting, um, and you could do this in, in any version of Excel. So um, that's that. Um, Maria says, thank you so much. It was great. Thank you so much, Maria. I'm, I'm really glad you enjoyed it as well. Um, Seva Kumar says, it was wonderful. Thank you, Seva Kumar. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, Craig says, I'm trying to make a sales estimator. This is great. Um, need more help though. Uh, give it a try, Craig. Uh, I think uh, what dynamic array functions give you is another way of looking and analyzing and, and, and uh, dealing with your data. But they're not really giving you a shortcut to do a work related stuff directly. So you may want to uh, take a stock of um, what other functionalities in Excel that will help you, especially with an estimator kind of a thing, you may have to use, um, depends on how your estimation process is, but a simple formula based est estimation like uh, X number of units sold, then this is what happens, that's one way. But if you're using more of a forecast, like every month, the sales will grow by 2% or 3%, then, uh, then the dynamic arrays can certainly help because you can generate a sequence of months and then you can take an input value and then next month will be X percentage more like that and build that. So give it a try. And uh, if you are still struggling, post a comment on the YouTube channel or send me an email and uh, I'll, I'll try to help you out. Uh, why doesn't paste link work in Office 365? Venkatesh asks, um, not really sure what paste link is. Are you trying to, uh, are you probably referring to the linked picture one? Uh, it does work, so I'm not really sure what you're trying to do, but uh, give it a try. Um, Sudanshu asks, uh, it'd be interesting to see how this can be used to improve the optimization problems? Very good question, Sudanshu. I, I think um, um, both uh, optimization and simulation are some scenarios where uh, having a dynamic array functionality is going to slightly revolutionize, if not completely change the way these things are done. Uh, this is because Solver is, uh, it, it does so much more automation, like it, it can run different possibilities and then tell you what is going on. Whereas dynamic arrays will probably um, help you generate those possibilities and calculate values for that. But they can also make it slow because it is a formula. So what happens with formula is it is always running, right? If you change something, it will run. Whereas a solver is a one-time process. So once you optimize, you don't have to go back to it. Um, but you know, it would be interesting to see some applications. So if you are able to manage something 
feel free to share the file with me. So I would love to take a look at how you are able to solve the same problem with solver vis-a-vis -vis dynamic arrays. Um, SDJ Kling asks, is there a limit on the raw data sizes when using filter options? And does it show any signs of slowness? I would imagine it will become slow or naggy once you have significantly large data. I've, to be honest, I've not tried this with uh, very, very large data sets. If I'm filtering a 500,000 rows table using formulas, then uh, then I will need to evaluate what I'm doing there. Usually once I have such large data, I will automatically switch to pivot tables and power pivot for my analysis, not use formulas per se. Um, but uh, uh, and then take that pivot table output and then feed that into either dynamic arrays or formula. So yeah, um, give it a try, but I would imagine it will become slow for sure. Um, Deanna says, uh, your fantastic research followed you quietly for years. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you so much. Um, Tim shares an interesting formula, return alpha sequence instead of number using CAR sequence 26651. Um, amazing it is actually, if you're wondering what that is doing, it is generating the sequence of 26 values, uh, which will go from 65 to almost up to 90, 65, 66 like that. And uh, when you send that sequence to a CAR function, which will then take the ASCII codes of those and turn that into A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So you could use that and generate a list of alphabets. You could, you know, the possibilities are limitless, right? You can take the sequence function and then push it into something else to come up with some very, very interesting ways of doing this. Uh, Cherian asks a question, if I create a file with these array formulas and email it to someone who has an older version, will they be able to view the data? Um, give it, uh, obviously they can see what is there on the file as and when they open it. The moment they touch something, they'll get a bunch of name errors because none of these formulas would exist in previous Excel version. So as long as they're not touching anything, it should be fine. But the moment they edit, it will all go to custard. So one way to um, deal with this is surprisingly enough, if you save the file and someone opens it on Excel online, they do have support for filter function, all of these functions. So that could be one way of uh, sharing that. So give it a try. And if it's still, uh, you, if you have to deal with colleagues who are working on older versions, then I would stay away from dynamic array functions uh, for now until they all catch up. Uh, Pro Gaming with Shivan asks, can you tell the difference between pivot table and VLOOKUP? Uh, <laughs> not sure if uh, uh, if there is any confusion between those two, but uh, what a pivot table is, it is actually a way to summarize your data. And what VLOOKUP is, it's a function to look up some information. So they're almost uh, really unrelated to each other. Uh, I suggest if you're completely new, uh, watch both the videos on VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP and the pivot table one to understand where these are and how they fit into your journey of data analysis. Simon, Simon says, if you spill out one row, can you then convert it to a table, format it, and then spill how many how many other lines you want? The All right, uh, I understand what you're doing, Simon, but uh, unfortunately, you cannot have dynamic array functions or spilled things inside a table. So you cannot take output of dynamic arrays and then put a table formatting on top of that. Uh, this is in general true for even normal functions, but uh, you, you can kind of get away with normal functions inside table, but a spill function inside table is simply asking for a disaster. So I, I can understand why you may want to do that, but you need to think beyond the table to uh, implement any formatting or visual visual prettiness aspect of the output. So for example, you may want to use conditional formatting or something else. So I'll show you one quick way this can happen. Uh, let's say we go to our last example that is uh, probably fresh in your minds. Uh, 
the five countries thing. So what I could do is I can select my data and some blank cells underneath and I can go to conditional formatting, create a new rule and then I can say format only cells that are no blanks, right? So only cells, no blanks. And then I can apply uh, a border formatting around them. So for example, I can say they need to all have an outline and it's not a great choice of border color, but if I disable my grid lines, you'll see that the grid lines are only there for this much data. And if I change this to 10, I'll get more values and hence I will get more grid lines. So this is how you can apply, but the conditional formatting needs to be applied to a range that can go beyond the spill values to be safe. So far, both conditional formatting uh, and the charts are not aware of the hash operator. So ideally I would love to um, go here and then say, instead of BW13 to BX13, I want to say BW13 hash so that it will automatically go down however far it wants. But Excel is not recognizing the hash operator in these dialogs, um, but it would happen eventually because uh, Excel 365 is something that is they're constantly improving it. So uh, I'm positive that will happen uh, in 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 some time soon. All right. Uh, Rod asks, is there a way to use unique to show you the items that are repeated? An excellent question. So we have seen two ways of it, right? One is to show remove anything that is duplicated. Another is to show only items that are present once. But what if I want to see the name of Ali and Cynthia? Because those are the ones that are duplicated. So this is where you need to get a bit, um, I think they might actually go and add an, a third option or fourth option for these functions eventually because nothing is set in stone with these uh, anymore. Whereas in, in an older version of Excel, for example, if I'm doing a session on VLOOKUP in Excel 2013, I can be pretty confident that that's how it works. There's no more changes to this, but with Excel 365, um, every month they add something new and uh, sometimes they, they, they can change. I'm trying to look where the unique thing is, it's here. All right, so we want to see the names of Ali and uh, Cynthia alone because they are the ones who duplicated. So what we could do is, I'll show it to you here. It's kind of getting a messy file now, but uh, we will live with that. Um, so if I simply say unique, I am going to get these names. What I want is I want the names that are not a, sorry, unique and then uh, exactly, uh, oh, this probably false will do. True. I'll get these four names and then I want to say out of these names, give me the names that are not equal to any of these four. Right. So th there, are, there are multiple ways of doing this. Uh, we will try uh, with the filter function because filter is what that operation is. So, so we could then say filter my names and then we can say include. So the name needs to be not one of these four. Um, let's try, I can't think of this immediately. I can probably get back to you in the later point of time or someone can help me in the comment section because sometimes when you're talking and explaining. Uh, so we want to count how many times each name is in, in, the, in the list. So we'll say count ifs and then like that, same value. Right? Maybe I'll show you this bit alone, then we can add the filter one. So count ifs of same range twice, what this will do is it will give you ones and threes and twos. So wherever it is three, that is third one is Ali. So Ali's name has appeared thrice. Uh, Cynthia has appeared twice. So now if I take this and I use this on filter and then say that data and then this count needs to be greater than one. So we will get to that. Of course, it will repeat the name. So we then send this little thing to unique. And we will get Ali and Cynthia, which is basically the names that are 
repeated so it's it's a roundabout way there could be even smaller way of doing this uh, but uh, yeah i hope you found that useful um priyanka asks can you share the share mention which of your videos of yours would cover this data validation piece um so just uh, search on the youtube channel for um data validation alternatively you can also go to my website and search uh, i i don't want to toggle here and go into my youtube channel because as i said i don't have two monitors here so it's kind of tricky for me to mal balance everything but search that um and then you will find um so venkatesh asks uh, if i have data in different workbooks can i use the array formula to pull them into my target sheet you can use it but i would simply say at this point you are missing on one of the greatest features of excel if not the best one the power query so i suggest you to spend a bit of time looking at power query i got an excellent video on my channel that will introduce power query and take you through the whole journey it's a, an hour long video so spend some time watch that video download the examples it will talk about this precise example how do i take data from three or four files combine them to get a consolidated view it will also help you automate the whole process you can refresh it and you can generate what you want um anna asks uh, do you plan to launch additional courses about power bi dax language and m language more in details uh yes in fact i already have a course called power bi playdate which is uh, uh which is the online course that i run uh, it is currently kind of in the waiting list mode Uh, but you can check it out um, that course basically goes into a great detail on m language and dax as well probably not at a very advanced level like i am not competing with the italians or anything but uh, um, you can you can check that out and it will give you a thorough footing on power bi based data analysis and reporting um andrew says would you please save the updated file yes i will i will upload that in the video description link will share you that uh just um, you know give it a few hours and then come back to the video page and you will find it there um cherian says thank you so much man appreciate all your input dhanyawad shukran mercy and gracias Thank you so much, Cherian. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I I really had so much fun doing this, and uh, I I I'm pretty glad that it all went well, and uh, and we had at some point more than seven hundred people tuning in. So that is a a massive number, and I I am pretty glad no no glitches were there and everything went smoothly. I I want to. Um, share some links i will put them in the video description as well which is on a dynamic arrays uh, detailed article on my site so please read that that will be basically giving you a thorough overview of all these six functions and the spill error and the hash operator and other things along with uh, some additional inputs and downloadable data that data set is a hr data set so it's probably a bit more relatable for uh, people who are working more with business data but nothing is relatable as as your own country so that's why i thought the country's data is pretty cool to work with and uh, i plan to do maybe one such session like a live session every every month or maybe every two months i am also a bit lazy so <laughs> sometimes i make a promise and then i get caught up on the live so but uh, i hope to do another one like this uh, soon in at the end of the march or early april so check out uh, the youtube notifications or if you have not already signed up uh, subscribe to the channel or maybe go to chandu.org and read the blog post uh, about that whenever that happens and uh, yeah hope to see you there again some other time sandeep says will this video be available in your channel i would love to keep it on there but because live sessions uh, tend to have very little value of replayability like people who watched it they can watch it again but uh, 
a complete random new person following along for 90 minutes of all these questions and arbitrary conversations can be a bit tricky so uh, i i I'm, i'm not planning to keep it as a listed video as i said it will be an unlisted video so you are more than welcome to bookmark and and watch it for a while i'll probably delete it uh, maybe a week or two down the line uh, just to keep it tidy another question from cherian for unique function when working on months will it treat jan 2021 or they are basically a number so you can format the data as any which way you want but from a formula point of view jan 2021 01 21 01 121 all of them are basically same value it's the numeric representation of that date so excel will treat all of them as a, a single value and then do whatever unique logic needs to happen on top so yeah give it a try on your data and then you will know exactly what i mean alfan uh, skill to success says great job buddy hats off to your passion big thanks from kerala big big thanks for you as well thank you so much for tuning in and uh, i i am glad you enjoyed this uh, Christoph says you're an absolute legend mate all the best to you and your family thanks for your time today thank you christoph uh, um it's 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 always good to hear uh, nice words about your work and thank you so much uh, all the best to you and your family as well Cherry and ask how do you see your excel version we know it is 365 but please show it uh, you can see it like this so if you go to your file menu and then uh account and from here you have this big little big about excel box which will have your version number now the the, the version number build number and the current channel all of these will play a role in what is it that you have access to as a feature so version 2102 preview channel this is what i am on because i uh, i also um, unlike mo- most of us work with excel because we we have a job to do whereas for me the job is to work with excel right i i talk about excel i share excel information with others so i i use a different office channel where i i kind of take a look at features that are not public yet so that is called office insider program so in this program uh microsoft would release updates to your computer before they are made generally available so that's what i am on that's the current channel preview channel is what i'm referring to there's even higher level where basically the developer will finish her build she'll push the button and then pretty much soon you will have it on your computer so i'm not on that level yet but uh, i get to see things that are not available in the general public yet but uh, whatever i have shown you today is all of those are generally available for a while so you can see this number there and then you can click on the what's new button to understand what things they have added recently um and and all of that um yeah i hope that help jagan mohan raj says would you like to would like to catch you up if you ever visit vizag again oh i would love to visit vizag again man i mean it has been a while and my mom and in laws and all the family friends relatives everybody is still in india so i miss them terribly but um, yeah i'm just hoping maybe at the end of the year we could travel to india for a holiday and and visit uh, the family and hug them and meet them it's been a while but um well we all got to do what you have to do right um, the the way with the covid situation everywhere in the world <laughs> uh yeah travel is disgraced and new zealand has kind of closed our borders so <laughs> we are all where we are but i would love to catch up uh, so next time i'm in vizag uh, i'll probably put a note or a story on youtube and you know we can try to see a ca- kind of like a meet up event or something like that Alfonso says could the dynamic arrays in future eliminate the use of relative and absolute absolute reference i believe that's not the case they will go in complementary nature with the absolute and relative references you still need them there's almost no way to not have them uh, yeah so i would think 
hash operator adds a new way of dealing with references but uh, not everything is absolute uh, uh, spill range right you could still have your regular data sets in excel so you would need those as well so sivakumar asks no connection to this session can we do macro vba with excel online uh, i don't think so excel online is pretty much everything that runs in your browser so it would use javascript if, if any and uh, i'm not even sure if office scripts will work in excel online so maybe someone can comment and tell me if that's the case but uh, yeah um, that's pretty much it uh, i think uh, uh, I have not used Excel online for any VBA related files. DJB says amazing functionality that yield dividends. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, DJB. I I feel the same with dynamic arrays. They have been around for almost two years now, but it always amazes me when I introduce this functionality to others and share the uh, ways in which you can manipulate and work with data because excel 365 is like an ongoing version of excel most people find themselves upgrading that less last week or a month ago so there's always a bunch of people moving on to excel 365 and they still continue to do what they were doing previously uh, and the moment they see oh wait a sec what is this x lookup or what is this filter function and then they their mind is blown so Tim says, I've seen this Lambda function. Uh, looks great, but doesn't work on my version. Of course, Lambda is one of those newer functions that they have added. Uh, it, it is still not publicly available. So I'm waiting for public rollout before doing a YouTube video on, on that. Lambda and let are two more functions that they have added, which will kind of make you do uh, a little more programming and automation and recursion and looping within the formulas and they open doors to even more possibilities than the dynamic arrays so i'm i'm looking forward to demoing them uh, once they become more available because I, I i can have them on my computer but because most people cannot get them there is almost zero value in me showing off them so i'll wait for uh, the rollout and then I will definitely do a video or, or a live session on them. Dennis asks, uh, what do you think that cool tools of Excel 365 Insider Edition will become an integral part of standard Excel 365? Um, it's a very, very specific question. To be honest, I am not familiar with what cool tools kind of does. So uh, yeah, I have got almost no information on what that does. And something that becomes standard Excel or not is entirely up to Microsoft. We, uh, I have no idea exactly what they decide to make it as an integral part or not. Shalini says, I'm new to the channel, attended the very first live session today, really very useful, great learning experience. Thank you so much for your valuable time and efforts. Thank you so much, Shalini. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Welcome to the channel and uh, um, thank you. <laughs> Sandeep asks, how long have you been using Excel? Now it's kind of become a personal Q&A, <laughs> but uh, I've been using Excel for quite a while now. In fact, I think I started using Excel way back in 2003 or 2002 when i was still in college not uh, for doing data analysis or anything just to keep track of my my expenses or uh, i used to prepare for competitive exams at that time uh, so i used excel to just understand how well i'm doing in those exam preparations and what mistakes i'm making and all of that how can you use sequence to just populate a range to another area uh you don't need to use sequence for that you can simply refer to the original range to another area maybe i'll show a quick demonstration so let's say we have some arbitrary data in a cell right 
output. I want this data here as well. All I have to do is equal to, and then I'll get that data here as well. You don't have to do just B12 and drag down or anything. You can refer to the entire range and the spill functionality would work. So this is uh, the basic of the dynamic array where you have something, it'll automatically spill to another range. If I want to take this, but show it sideways, uh, you could then, instead of using that, you can use the transpose function, uh, take the data and put it sideways. So transpose, what it does is it will take the data in rows, move them to columns, vice versa. Not just from a visible point of view, it will internally rearrange the data in the way Excel represents. So um, this all goes back a little more programming side of things, but basically you have uh, th this data here is a single dimension data. It has um, 10 rows and one column but you could also have 10 columns and one row so usually when the data is represented in the internal memory of programs they use a different way of dealing with rows and columns and you could have one dimension or you could have two dimensions of data and all of that so transpose is one of those functions that you could use to kind of flip data this way or that way Uh, do you know if dynamic uh, who asks uh, do you know if dynamic arrays will be introduced in standard excel uh, i would love to see them in standard excel man i mean the it, it is fairly annoying that microsoft would have all of these exciting candy like features and then limit them to only one particular version of excel or another and it is even more annoying for me as a trainer or as a person who is kind of talking about Excel and helping people understand and use it better. Because for example, a lot of people will be able to do their job a whole lot better uh, if they can use the Excel Cup function, but the Excel Cup is only available in Office 365. And then Microsoft still sells the old version of Excel. So it kind of creates that imbalance in the ecosystem and people go and find online some help or some example formula for their situation only to realize that it would only work in this version of Excel or that version of Excel. So uh, yeah, I, I think Microsoft could do a lot better by consolidating their features and availability. I understand the limitation though that uh, you know Excel 365 kind of gives them an option to constantly improve while Excel 2016, 19, or 2022, or whatever version they want, uh, will give the IT departments flexibility to set in stone what they're using and live with that. Um, but yeah, no justification from an end user point of view. It, it is just painful for us. So I don't see that as a plan for them, but maybe it will. Adeni asks, how does AI currently work in Excel? Excel does have, especially the newer versions of Excel, have a little bit of AI built into that. Uh, for example, this little analyze data with the lightning bolt button on the corner. Uh, if you see that, click on it and then Excel will try to discover something interesting. We can try this here. It's just uh, most of the time it is amusing and not terribly useful but sometimes it is useful like here it is analyzing the data it says uh, um, country united state has noticeably higher gdp well obviously <laughs> uh, and then it'll official language none has noticeably higher gdp now that makes absolutely no sense like uh, but then again uh, it it so happens maybe if two or three of the bigger countries have no official language then that's that's what uh, uh, that is so you can try that it's not real like solid ai but uh, it, it will get there eventually that's probably on the roadmap for office 365 as well to introduce a little more um, artificial intelligence um, algorithms and functions and all of that but in order for the ai and ml kind of thing to work better you also need uh more structured 
arrangement of data while excel does offer that mechanism through tables and power query you need uh, something even more and that's where i guess the um, having a power bi kind of a data source will be useful and power bi does have more ai and uh, machine learning algorithms built into it already Um, and Harry Prasad says another AI presence is flash fill. Of course, flash fill is kind of AI, but it is more like pattern recognition than anything. And it is sometimes it will also yield stupid results, but uh, fairly amusing ones. <laughs> okay. Um, I think uh, we have gone on for, uh, an hour and 45 minutes which is significantly longer than i would love to mm, uh, i had initially planned but i'm really glad and i i i am super excited to see all of you and i i think everyone enjoyed ourselves so i will conclude the session here now and uh, and then we will uh, as i said uh, we will have the download example file available to you in the video description um, soon, probably in, in a few hours time and, uh, and then go from there. So it will be there in the video description. You just want to bookmark the video page and then come back to it maybe, um, in, uh, uh, in about, uh, three, four hours time frame, and then that'll be there. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, I will again see you all uh, some other time, maybe next month or the month after I will do another live session and then we will uh, have uh, same good time. This time I, I'll probably talk, uh, I want to talk about a few other new things that are happening to Excel. So maybe the data types feature or the uh, or something new in Power Query or something like that. We will we'll do a session on that. Thank you so much. and. Uh, um yes uh, i all i wish you all a very very happy weekend i am already on saturday in new zealand but some of you are still uh, on early or late friday so whatever point of the time it is and whatever place in the world you are uh have, have a good time and enjoy and uh, stay stay awesome everyone thank you so much bye bye